G'day, my name's Henry. I'm one of the hosts here on the Wine for the People YouTube channel. And today I'm gonna to be taking you through a deep dive of the Chardonnay grape variety. So, Chardonnay or Cardonnay to true connoisseurs is one of the most widely planted grape varieties around the world. And it appeals to different groups for different reasons. To the uninitiated, such as myself, it's a warm, recognizable name that can feel safe on a wine list. But for winemakers, it's considered the ultimate playground for showing off the talents and finesse of skilled grape handlers. This being the case, there is a truly wide selection of Chardonnays in today's market, ranging from the two for $25 bargain bin specials up to bottles that can cost the same as a house deposit back in the 80s. 12th century Burgundy is considered by many to be the birthplace of the variety. And as such, it's a good place to start this discussion of what you can expect next time you crack open a bottle of Chard. Originally, a hybrid of Pinot Noir and an obscure Croatian variety, it gets its name from the Chardonnay village in Mackinac and was soon planted northerly from there up to places even I've heard of like Cote d'Or, Chablis and Champagne. It seems to me that the reason winemakers put Chardonnay on a pedestal is it's one of those varieties where terroir can be expressed so well. Uh, that's the sense of place in a bottle. It's what separates wine from other styles of alcohol, that ability to tell the story of a place with just a flavor in a glass. Even looking at the subregions inside and around Burgundy, you can actually get distinctly different examples of the style. The mild climate of Chablis produces crisp, zingy, refreshing drops that have the essence of green apple inside. The vineyards of Champagne a little bit north of there, which are cooler again allow the grapes to maintain their acidity, which makes it perfect for making champagne. But the Rolls Royce of Chardonnays come from the warmer regions of Burgundy, in Cote d'Or, with villages like Merceau producing rich, rounded, textural, creamy examples of the wine. They make wine nerds and drinkers like me on a budget weak at the knees, but for different reasons. But if we leave Burgundy behind for a moment, talk about what you can expect to find in Chardonnays from around the world. Uh, winemakers love aging it in oak barrels, which can give wine that sort of toasty, vanilla-y, nutty flavor. Granted, if you take it too far, it can feel like you're pulling splinters out of your teeth after a glass. So if that's the case, you don't wanna go down that road, maybe aging your Chardonnay in stainless steel could be the move. Could be looking to make something that's a little bit more of that Chablis style of crisp, refreshing white. Personally, my relationship with Chardonnay was shaped initially by the absolute oversaturation of hot climate mass-produced Aussie Shards of the 90s, to the point that well, when I was a kid pouring wines for mum and dad back in the house, we had an ABC rule, which was anything but Chardonnay. And I'm not alone there. Aside from that very small sample size anecdotal story, uh, British wine critic Oz Clark described the grape as the ruthless colonizer, the destroyer of the world's vineyards and the destroyer of the world's palates. Good example of this can actually be seen in steadfast traditional Italian producers being put in a position where they feel it necessary to rip out their native vines and plant the more market-friendly variety originating from France. But just like Double Denim and Lowe's Rise Jeans, Chardonnay is very much so back with a vengeance in my life and the lives of many of my fellow enthusiasts. New world examples of the grape coming out of our backyard, California, New Zealand. They've learned a lot from the past. They've made changes to the mistakes they've had and are now making shardies with more nuance, refinement, and at times actually managing to out Burgundy, Burgundy. But the real reason half of you are here watching this video is to show off the next time you're having a quaff with your mates. So let's get into some tasting notes. How can you pick a Chardonnay out amongst a lineup of Rieslings and Aligotes? Well, first of all, Color. Chardonnay tends to have a little bit more of that golden straw-like color, which indicates a more full-bodied white than something like a Riesling that has an almost water-like clarity to it. On the nose, buttery and oaky, there's a pretty good chance you're sniffing Chard, but again, with the wide array of styles, it can sometimes be a Chard in Riz's clothing, presenting with a bit more of that bright citrusy sort of thing. So to decide if it's really a Shardy party or not, have a taste and look for integrated oak and acid on the palate. If it has listed stone fruit, you could be drinking a Shannon, but if it feels like you're drinking melted butter that's running down a freshly knocked in cricket bat, you're probably drinking Chardonnay. So, you know where it came from, you know what it tastes like, and you know where it's gone. Now you're chomping at the bit to try some for yourself, right? Well, here are some recommendations to start you out. Well, this first one doesn't really start you out. If you've got like a 600-ish dollar hole burning in your pocket and you want to spend on some Chardonnay, Bono de Matre, straight from the heartland in Burgundy, from the hill of Corton, will give you the full baller experience, including the bill. But if you want to try something cool and you're still working a casual job and paying rent, get yourself a bottle of Patrick Pugh Chard. Uh, they're grapes sourced direct from Chablis, same region, but with a price tag that isn't prohibitive. And finally, if you're coming over to my place for a glass, we'll be drinking the Shaw and Smith Chardonnay, which punches well above its weight 
given its entry level price point. But yeah, that's my two points on Chardonnay. Uh, feel free to fact check me in the comment section down below and be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and we'll see you in the next one guys. Cheers.